Aw, look at the cute silly little fox creatures. It's so adorable and innocent. Sure, there's some NSFW of these things out there, but what doesn't have a little NSFW art nowadays? They're so adorable and wholesome and perfect. Nothing could ever be wrong with them or problematic. Especially not about these cute neon babies. Well, let's see who made them. Let me check wiki fur. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fictional foxes. Blah, blah, blah. Created by... I don't want to do this anymore. Hello everybody and welcome to another original species video where we cover animals made up by the furry fandom. Today we're talking about a video I've been putting off since the gem raptor video. But I was reminded of their existence last week in a live stream and I put it off long enough. We're talking about Citra, a very incredibly average looking creature. They're just citrus colored foxes. And honestly, they're entirely unoriginal, and there is nothing special about them. You've honestly made more thought out and original creatures when you were 10. The only thing special about them is their creator. Most people have no doubt forgotten about Citra. They hardly existed, and if you weren't looking at internet corn 10 years ago, they'd be easy to miss. But before we continue, this episode is going to be full of some very not fun stuff. Once we get past the species stuff, I'll be talking about the creator's long history of bad stuff like cub art. What is a citra? Citra are an original species made by Zausch. <laughs> citra are a bioengineered species of fox created by scientists in an attempt to isolate the gay gene. The scientists of course succeeded, they just played some Cher and Elton John, and collected the gay juices we all naturally secrete when hearing such musings. In this process of breeding or engineering these foxes to have a higher rate of homosexuality, they made Citra a 90% gay male species. That's right, they're turning the freaking foxes gay! Well, gayer. They were pretty gay already. They didn't succeed in making an entirely gay species. They left 10% straight in order to continue breeding and propagating the primarily gay male foxes. These disgusting straight creatures are called citruses. There's no pics because straight people don't exist. This is just a joke, please don't take this seriously. And gay males, aka the normal ones, are called citra. There are no female citra that aren't straight. Female citra exist only to breed and propagate the species. That's kind of a hint at the uh, things to come here. It's uh, the subtext doesn't get much better. And the whole thing with the straight ones being called citruses, it kind of already hits me weirdly. The language already others the gay ones as being almost an entirely separate species from the straight ones. It gets worse here with some outdated terminology. Quote, there are no hermaphrodite citra. Their genetic purity prevents such mutations. Can I get a yikes? Are you a rewards member? Uh, no. Can you come here? I know. Okay, uh, 1461. Need a bag for your sharpies? Oh, no, thank you. Okay. <coughs> Yikes! That's gonna be a fucking yikes for me, holy shit! Thank you. Considering the species was created, holy crap, 18 years ago, famed cub artist, Zosh, <laughs> likely didn't know that people incorrectly called intersex people and trans people hermaphrodites in a derogatory manner. Usually when the term hermaphrodite is used uh, against trans and intersex people, it's used in a derogatory or fetishizing manner. The fetishizing part is particularly prominent in some furry circles. But the term is used as a slur against trans and intersex people, so whether Zausch <laughs> means trans or intersex citra aren't possible. Who knows? I'm sure you're all dying to make citra, and this question of not being answered is driving you up a wall. It's probably driving you absolutely bonkers not knowing <laughs> whether you can have a trans citra. I guess we'll never know if Zosh's <laughs> eugenic utopia has room for anyone but gay men and the straight people who serve as breeding livestock. Anyway, the scientists who were practicing gay eugenics lost funding and were going to purge the species. Eugenics, anti-trans utopias, and genocide all in one video? Wow, I am speedrunning demonetization today. Thankfully, the scientists failed to unplug the Citra, and they have since broken out of the facility where they now live in the wild. 
Citra colonies tend to live in an elven and wild lifestyle. They live in citrus groves. They found a way to get fruitier, I guess. They feature a high metabolism, so I haven't seen any depictions of like a heavier set citra. I guess they're all, you know, scrawny from what I've seen. And weirdly, once they consume a citrus fruit, their fur changes color and they are forever bound to that grove. You might see some overlap here with some other species like uh, soda alpacas or soda roos or something like that where the food they consume changes their color. It's not, a, it's not a super original or unique idea. A lot of species do it. But citra are different because if they eat anything other than fruit, they get sick and potentially die. So they're so fruity they can only eat fruit. <laughs> They don't use all this food for themselves, and as their creator says, Citra are useful in providing entertainment to nearby civilized units and are paid in physical resources. What this translates to is Citra bang people or give them fruit in exchange for goods. So there's the sex part if you were waiting for that. As for how they look, well, you've seen numerous pics of them so far. Well, probably just three. I've only seen like three pictures of them, but they all have a trait in common. They're all very small, shorter than the average anthro character, only standing at two feet to four feet tall. If you've seen Citra at all, it's likely from this picture, the Kama Citra. I can't show the full thing because there are dongs in it. It's the first thing I was exposed to by Zausch in general. There isn't much of this I can show, but it's a bunch of intercourse positions being performed by Citra. Honestly, the most offensive part of this image, other than the phrase double pawing, is the horrible design of it. I know this was a almost a whole adult ago, but he's an artist, and this looks terrible. Default fonts, like I'm sure one of these is Arial, and a terribly simple header font. There's no design to it. There's no, there's nothing that lends to the idea that these creatures are made out of fruit other than the g generic plain text with green and the other color. I'm colorblind. It's, there's nothing hinting at it here that these creatures are fruit based. There's no images of fruit in it at all. This is a poster by the way, and this was made to sell to people. You're an artist. Put some artistry in it. Why not use a cursive font to mirror the pretzely nature of the positions? Imagine uh, putting this on a wall in your home. Burn the house down. It's tainted. This isn't the worst thing about it though. Someone made a 3DS theme of it. Now with that, we are done with the species part, and now we're on to Zausch himself. Also, I'm going to say his name a lot, so I won't be editing in the screams anymore. Zausch. Warning. This is where I cover a lot of the stuff that Zausch has done. Everything here is easily searchable, and I'd suggest researching this stuff for yourself, but you'd need an eyeball bleach rinser afterwards. Semi-related, Zosh has blocked me since I made the Iceberg video where I mentioned him, so I don't think he cares to defend himself from this stuff anymore. Anyway, I'll be discussing Cub, SA accusations against him, and his friendship to Kiro and Cothrix. Dang, Kiro and Cothrix too? They're like the peanut butter and jelly of shit. Also, side note, I'm lucky to know other furry YouTubers who have covered Zosh in the past, so you're going to see a lot of clips from Lagovert's video where Lagovert shows the context and talks about it. I don't show the whole video, so if you're curious, I've linked Lagovert's video in the description. Zausch's art. Zausch, as you can tell from Citra being made in 2005, has been a long time participant in the furry fandom, and as is the case with anyone who has been in the public eye that long, there are some stories to tell. To get the obvious one out of the way, Zausch draws cup. Every time I bring this up, there's always someone who didn't know. So here's your yearly reminder that Zosh draws minors having relations with adults. It's not just images of ambiguously aged characters or small characters who look like they might be young, like in the case of the Citra. There are comics where the characters involved are minors themselves. I won't name the comics because I don't want people looking them up. But one of the comics depicts young female characters in early high school in a universe where people don't wear bottoms. In this comic, there is depictions of minors engaging in sexual behaviors with adults as well as incest. If you go on to E6 and sign in and go to Zosh's tag, you'll see a bunch of blacklisted tags for Lolly and Young. Young is a bit ambiguous, but if we check out Lagovert's video on Zosh from a couple years ago, you can see the tags associated with Zosh's art were Cub, Shoda, and Lolly. There was also his comic involving cuckolding, some incest, as well as a dog girl looking suspiciously underage. As much as he'd probably shrug it off, he doesn't seem to have much of a problem making Cub content. As shown by last video, Zosh has a pretty huge slice of cup content made. It's pretty obvious he has no issue drawing it. 
Cub was changed into Young, but if you were to search it in E6, you would still see it as a tag for other art. So specifically for Zausch, this tag was changed to Young, or maybe some other artists use it too, but specifically in the case of Zausch's art, Cub is not a Cub anymore, it's Young but Cub is still used for other artists. Cub must have had a lot of negativity associated with it. Hmm. Can't imagine why they changed it to something more ambiguous. Although there's more controversy to be had than just his artwork of adultery. There's also Zosh using the Zootopia hashtag on Twitter months before the movie release to share his not safe for work Zootopia art. There was Zosh and the SA accusations. Zosh has been accused of SA by Ferality. She accused him of this while talking to Dragoneer, the owner of FA. As you might remember, Dragoneer was also pretty buddy-buddy with Growly, a convicted sex offender, so associating himself willingly with another potential pest shouldn't be a surprise. This was started up when Fur Affinity owner Dragoneer announced that his team of volunteer programmers would be working on their fourth attempt to rewrite the site. This attempt was dubbed Project Phoenix. Now, the leader of this team turned out to be Zosh. This decision was made regardless of the private messages leaked during the 2010 Yiffy Leak deal, where we'd see one of Zosh's ex-love interests, Ferality, coming to Dragoneer and claiming that Zosh had emotionally manipulated and intimidated her into having sex with him. Ferality said in messages with Dragoneer that Zosh refused to use condoms during sex after previously agreeing to them. They both consented to intercourse with the condition of using a condom and by not using one and getting her permission to not use one, Zosh would be guilty of SA, but this is all alleged. She also said that Zosh targets smaller women who are less capable of self-defense and is physically abusive with women. So knowing about what he draws, child abuse, and his art's frequent depiction of very small characters, some as small as just two feet tall, Zosh has a clear preference for very small people, so I'm inclined to believe Ferality's statements because it matches with what we know about him. Also, more than half a dozen other women have come forward saying all similar things. Ferality said this in full confidence that it would remain between her and Dragoneer. But due to some leaks, this private conversation made it out. Dragoneer seemed to be pretty neutral on whether or not Zosh sexually violated someone or not. At least that's what he said before saying that Zosh couldn't have sexually violated Ferality because she willingly drove to his house. Dragoneer supported Zosh by saying that she consented to adult actions by driving to his home. So remember, don't go to any dinner parties at Dragoneer's or Zosh's house because according to them, that's consenting to getting fucked on the dinner table. Dragoneer, as far as I'm aware, isn't guilty of anything, but boy is he drawn to disgusting people like a magnet. You kind of have to question a person's sense of morals if they so willingly associate themselves with people like this. Like the day he banned Growly, he tweeted about how much it sucked to have to ban a friend. Although Dragoneer would ban Daniel from the site, it should be kept in mind what he was thinking during and after the decision. During their conversation, you have him saying things like, I am so fucking torn right now, and I don't want to have to do this, but members of FA staff work in law enforcement. And when he would actually go through with the ban after thinking it over, he would tweet out, One of the hardest things you can ever do as an admin is ban a friend. A good friend. Tonight I had to, and I hate myself for it. And although I've been put in that position myself after my original video on Dragoneer, I can say... No. Whether it's pedophilia, zoophilia, necrophilia, any any philia, no matter how good a friend is, brushing them off due to some gross behavior or interests really doesn't take that much willpower. Bro, I've cut people off for refusing to not use my chosen name. If my friend turned out to be a pedo, I'd be the first one to grab a torch and pitchfork. Because these abusers don't just speak for themselves, but for anyone they hang out with. If you have an abuser as a friend, then you're a victim too. They took advantage of you and are using you to speak for their character, and all that does is speak for your character. Drop the dead weight. Ferality has since disappeared from the net, and boy, I wonder why. She went to someone in confidence, and that confidence was betrayed to protect someone like Zausch. <laughs> Dragoneer put the burden of proof on the victim, and no one will believe her no matter what she brings forward, because abusers surround themselves with people to protect them, and victims have no one. Dragoneer likely defended Zausch because this was during a major rehaul of her affinity. Zausch was one of the volunteers to assist with the rebuilding of the site, and lied, or at least embellished, on his ability to code. Dragoneer must have taken him at his word, and gave him the key to the city, so Dragoneer probably wasn't in the best position either. I guess it made more sense to require more proof that Zosh was bad than 
it was to just bench him and protect the site's image. Zouch uses CP as references. Zouch's list of depravity doesn't really have a clear end, but if you needed more reasons... Zouch was caught in the Telegram conversation where he and a client were talking about the age of a character for what was assumed to be a commission. In this conversation, there were images of minors in swimsuits, as well as images and gifs that looked suspiciously like CP. The thing that I didn't mention in that video, however, was Zosh's response to the whole thing. In it, he says that he didn't possess or share CP, and that the conversation was discussing a commission, mainly the body type for the character. The body type being a 12-year-old child in a swimming suit, if we're to go off by the conversation. The thing is, he also admitted to the conversation being completely real, and that the suspicious gifs were of adult actor Sammy Daniels. I don't know why someone would know an adult actor who looks eerily young by name, but let's keep it going. Last up, he says how he's not proud of how far the line was blurred during that conversation, and that he regrets having said conversation. It is appreciated that he didn't lie and came out about it, but there's just one problem. He says he regrets the conversation, however, he says he isn't a fan of how far the line was blurred. The only line that could have blurred there was the line between Cub and Real CP. Zouch was very proud that he talked the commissioner up from a 10 year old to a 12 year old. What a f***ing hero. Zosh, Kiro, and Kothrix. Later he went back to his friends Kiro and Kothrix. If you don't remember Kothrix, here you go. And if for some reason you haven't touched the internet in a decade and this is the first video you watched, Kiro, or since rebranded, Radiance Wolf, as someone who is a necro zoo sadist. The only reason he wasn't jailed was because of the statute of limitations and America doesn't really care much about what you do to animals. I mean, we don't care about what happens to children in school, so why do you think we would care about animals? Here we have an almost two hour live stream detailing the chat between scaly YouTuber Cothrix, infamous zoophile Carol the Wolf, and Zosh. During the stream you have Cothrix trying to get to the bottom of the whole Kiro situation. The stream would go on YouTube before getting taken down for breaking nudity and sex terms of service. But the crowning moment of this stream will be a text conversation between the three of them. Here you have Kiro admitting to having an interest in feral art, but never committing zoophilic acts with any animals. He was called out on this pretty quick by the two, but then you go down and Zosh goes on about how if Kiro admits to being interested in zoophilia, no one is going to care besides SJWs. He then seems to brag about the fact that he essentially came out as a pedophile, saying that his conscience is clear because he didn't lie about what happened in those chats. Chats where he tried to talk the commissioner into sexual art of a 12 year old instead of the 10 year old they were originally going for. And as for Cotherick, saying that 20% of the furry community are zoophiles and that Kiro should be fine because people outside the furry community already think we're all zoophiles anyway. But hey, the dude's drawn what can only be described as a fuckload of cub porn, so I guess he's a valuable part to the fandom or something, I don't know. Anyway, that's Zosh for you. Artist of incest, cub, cuckery, and supporter of zoophiles till the cows come home. Anyway, there isn't a good way to end something like this. No satisfying ending. He's still doing his thing, because in the fandom, if you have a cute suit or draw corn, you can commit war crimes and get away with it. Hopefully this is something we grow past and that these, I don't know, 20 incidences were just a learning process. If people go to bat for abusers, I wouldn't trust them. They're either easily duped or hiding secrets of their own. I hope you enjoyed this video about Citra, a very mediocre and problematic species made by an even worse person. I couldn't talk about this species without talking about Zausch, so I'm sorry for bringing him up again. You've all probably seen enough of him. I'm not here to point fingers and say Zausch hates gay women, trans people, or intersex people. It was 18 years ago. Besides, focusing on this old info is pretty pointless when compared to the mountains of other junk about him. So let's focus on what we know. He sucks. Bye bye. Pretty great that he made such a bland species. Would have sucked if these things caught on. Thanks for watching, and thanks to supporters like Colorado Blue. Series, Romu, Blonsk, Vaderson, Linky, and Sly. If you want to support the channel, you can by joining the Patreon by going to bit.ly forward slash I'll see you all next time, and bye bye.